This is an introduction to an irrigation controller. This specific one is a Rainbird ESP TM2. And today we're going to help you understand how to use this irrigation controller. Very first thing, just make sure that it is plugged in. I'm gonna open it up, make sure you have some type of display on. It should be set to auto. If you're coming out of the winter or out of dormancy, they'll typically be set to off. So there's just a little toggle on here. It goes from off to auto. First thing you wanna check to make sure that your dates and times are all correct. This is super important because you wanna make sure that everything that the computer thinks is happening is actually happening on the correct day. You can change these if they're not by hitting the over arrow and use the plus or minus to go up or down in months or numbers. If you go over one more click, you're going to see the hour and the minute. So all that's correct, that's a good first step. The next thing is the start times. Toggle over one more notch to start times. The first start time for this is 6 a.m. If I hit the over arrow, it'll be the second start time. This second start time is actually set up for off. I'm, I'm back on my first start time. If I wanted to change this, I could add 15 minute increments to the time. So now it would start at 6.15, now it would start at 6.30. Every time I hit that plus sign, it goes up 15 minutes. If you toggle over to run times, it'll start with station. Station is also the same thing as a zone. So zones are typically uh, set up around the property to ensure that specific areas get watered at one time. And it also, we take into account the pressure on the site, if it's a well or if it's uh, city water. So station one, is 20 minutes, is that for 20 minutes. If station one, I wanted to run for more than 20 minutes, I would hit the plus box and it'll go up one minute at a time. You can determine this by your soils and how much you're actually watering on the site. Right now it's at 30, we're gonna take it back down with the negative arrow back to 20. If I hit the over arrow, it'll go to station two or zone two. You can go up to six zones or six stations on this specific ESP TM2. Now the next thing is the watering days. Say tomorrow it's set for on right now and I want it to be off. I hit the minus box and it goes to a crossed out water droplet that signifies it's actually off. So we wanna turn it back on. So I go back to Thursday and I hit the plus. If I toggle over, to manual watering. Manual watering, you can actually run a zone outside of the normal schedule. So if I went to manual watering, I hit the over arrow, which is set up for 20 minutes, the same as zone one, and I hold that arrow, that over arrow in, and you know it's gonna start watering because there's a sprinkler head that starts flashing and the irrigation actually turns on. In a manual water, if I wanna shut that off, I wanna tip my toggle back to off and it'll turn everything off. If you go to off, always make sure that you go back to auto. One of the biggest issues that we see whenever we go to a client's house post installation or after the installation has occurred is that the timer's off. Always make sure that the timer is on auto. The biggest thing after an install, we set these irrigation systems up for watering twice a day for 20 to 30 minutes per station or per zone. So we want them to run in the morning and the evening. The sod and your plants really require a lot of water that first 10 to 14 days. So make sure that they're running at least twice a day for that first 10 to 14 days after installation. And then after that 10 to 14 days, you can back that time off to once a day. And then a few weeks after that, you can actually back it off to once every other day. So overwatering is just as bad as drought conditions. So make sure that we use our irrigation sparing when we need it. It's really designed to simulate rain events. So we wanna get a good solid soaking on the property, on the plants, in the drip zone and on the turf zones. And then we want it to dry out. We want that water to go down into the ground and make those roots go after it and try to find it. If you are constantly watering every day, twice a day, you're overwatering your property. You're nursing your yard along, you're nursing your plants along, you're nursing your trees along, and we don't wanna be nursing plants and trees and sod 
along. We want it to actually get stronger. We want to grow this so it doesn't need irrigation. The day that we can shut this irrigation off and just use it for significant drought events is really a good day. Save the irrigation for when you need it. It'll be there in times of drought in June, July, August, September, whenever it's very hot. The first 10 to 14 days, make sure you're watering twice a day after installation, and then you can back off after that. Um, you can turn the evening zone off, just water in the mornings, and then you can water every other day, or if you can just get down to maybe twice a week to simulate those rain events. This is a basic introduction to an irrigation controller, and I hope it helps you all to really understand your irrigation system and uh, prolongs the life of your plants and trees.